we are now starting with the other nucleic acid that is RNA. Ribonucleic acid and ribonucleic acids are also polymers of of nucleotides. The nucleotide has same three things as in DNA that is a pentose sugar. The pentose sugar is a ribose sugar and nitrogen base. Nitrogen bases are same purines and pyrimidines. Purines are two A and G and pyrimidines out of three here are again two present. The two which are present are C and U. That means T gets replaced by U. So here it is instead of ATCG it is AUCG in RNA and phosphoric acid. Same three things. Now the nucleotide which we see in case of RNA is has a ribose sugar, ribose sugar on carbon 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, carbon 2 has OH and H, carbon 3 also has H and OH. That means there are two hydroxyl groups or two functional groups. This one also attaches to the nitrogen base at carbon number 1 and phosphoric acid to carbon number Fine. Say the bonds which are between sugar and nitrogen bases are glycosidic bonds and the bond which is between pentose sugar and phosphorus here is phosphodiester bond. Only difference between DNA and RNA in terms of nucleotide is that in DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose. That means instead of OH at carbon 2, there is only H in ribose. Th second carbon also has OH and third carbon also has OH. Second difference is in terms of nitrogen bases. In DNA, it is ATCG and in case of RNA, T gets replaced by U. So there are AUCG. Another important thing about RNA is RNA is are single stranded. We'll take some exceptions later on. They are single stranded. And that is why this base pair rule or Chargaff's rule is not applicable on these single stranded structures. RNAs are of three types. So three types of RNAs. And these three types, these are the three main types which are classified on the basis of the function which they perform. mRNA, that is messenger RNA, its role is to bring the information from DNA to protein synthesis. So this is going to be the connecting link between DNA and the protein synthesis. Second is rRNA, that is ribosomal RNA, it is attached with proteins to form that ribosome structure and this helps in protein synthesis. And third is known as tRNA that is transfer RNA and as the name tells us it is going to transfer or transport the amino acid. So it is transfer of amino acids from the cytoplasm to the site where the protein is to be synthesized. So this is the basic information about the RNAs. Now let us take all these RNAs, their structures in detail and the role which they perform. So we'll start with mRNA now. Let us now talk about mRNA, that is messenger RNA. Messenger RNA, the concept that or this idea that such kind of an RNA existed was given by Jacob and Munar in 1961. The idea or the concept that they gave was that
that DNA has the code and ribosome is the place where the protein is synthesized. So how is the message or those codes from DNA are coming to the ribosomes where they get translated in the form of proteins? So they said that there is a molecule which is synthesized on DNA and that brings all that information from DNA for protein synthesis. So that concept, that idea of mRNA which is doing this job was given by Jacob and Mona. So this gave the idea of mRNA or a molecule of a molecule which is actually our mRNA performing or helping in transfer of information from DNA to ribosomes for protein synthesis. So this concept, this idea was given by Jacob and Munar. Now this mRNA is actually synthesized on DNA. That means if we are talking of this DNA strand and this DNA strand has say the nitrogen bases as A, T, C, A, G, T, A, T, C, G. Then the RNA which is going to be synthesized will be on this DNA for example then the pairing is going to be slightly different. How is it going to be different? Because this is the RNA which is getting synthesized. If it was a DNA molecule a would have paired with T. <coughs> Here, A is going to pair with U because T gets replaced by U in case of RNA. T is going to get paired with A, there is no problem. C with G, A again with U, G with C, T with A, A with U, T with A, this is G and this is C. So this is how the information is going to get transferred from DNA to RNA. Now let us talk about all the steps in which this mRNA is synthesized. So this is our DNA strand. When DNA is converted or on this DNA RNA is synthesized, then the new piece which we get is known as HN RNA. This HN RNA has everything which is on the DNA. The DNA has some coding parts also and non-coding parts also which are known as euchromatin and heterochromatin. So here on the RNAs we would get some coding part and some non-coding part. So on this piece we get exons and introns. Exons are the coding parts and introns are the non-coding parts. And for this translation, that means when we are going to use this for protein synthesis, we don't want these non-coding parts because anyways they are not coding for anything. So this piece which is synthesized here, that is HNRNA, heteronuclear RNA, is under or it's cut using endonucleases. The process is known as splicing by or with the help of endonucleases. Endonucleases are enzymes which cut the nucleotides or which can break the bonds between the nucleotides. So let us say that these darker parts which we have drawn, they are the introns and the lighter parts are exons. So this is exon 1, exon 2, exon 3, exon 4 and exon 5. When this undergoes splicing, this piece gets cut into exons, introns, exons, introns. That means all these segments they get cut. This is intron, intron, intron and these are our exons. So this is exon 1, 2, exon 3, exon 4 and exon 5. Using another enzyme that is ligase. 
Now only exon exons are attached because exon is the coding part. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, and five exons are attached. Is this our mRNA? Not yet, because this is a highly unstable molecule. It has to be stabilized. The stabilization takes place by adding a cap and a tail. A cap is added at the fifth end and a tail is added at the third end. After adding a cap and a tail, this molecule is stable and now it can come out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and help in the process of translation. This process, that means from DNA, the information getting transferred on mRNA is known as transcription. So this entire step is known as transcription. And how is this transcribed? From DNA, first it is HNRNA which is synthesized. HNRNA has coding and non-coding parts. It has to undergo splicing, that is cutting, using enzymes which are known as endonucleases. These enzymes separate introns and exons. Using ligase, only exon exons which are the coding parts are ligated or joined. So we get a chain of exons. This molecule is unstable. It is stabilized by adding a cap and a tail. And now this structure is our mRNA. This is the mRNA. Now let us see the detailed structure of this mRNA. Here we have just shown in the simple form. Now we will talk about what this cap is made up of, what the tail is made up of and how exactly the mRNA looks. But the process is going to be like this. So now let us take the structure of mRNA. Let us see the structure of mRNA now. This is the part which is formed by joining of all the exons. So this is the 5 prime and this is the third prime. That means these are the carbons which are free. Towards the fifth end is attached what we call the cap. The cap is made up of methylated guanine. Methylated guanine or methylated G. It is always on the fifth prime. On the third prime is attached another chain which is made up of many adenines. So it can be written as A, 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 A. Many A's are there. And that is why it is known as a polyadenine tail. Polyadenine tail. So after capping and tailing, we said the structure becomes stable. The cap gets added on the fifth carbon of the main chain, that is exon, exons, joint. And the third end gets a tail which is made up of a long chain of adenines. And that is what is known as polyadenine tail. This part, the first structure which is here or the first thing which is here, is start codon and invariably the start codon is a u g we are writing u this is rna and that is why instead of t there is u and the last thing which is here towards the third prime is the stop codon stop codon can be any of the three stop codons and the structure which is in between the start and the stop codon, that means this part, this entire part is actually made up of the structural genes, the genes which are going to get translated in the form of a protein. So this is the, this is the part which is made up of structural genes and this is our structure of mRNA. 
The process by which it was formed was from DNA it gets transcribed. The first thing which is formed, which is just the simple first primary transcript, which we call the HNRNA, it has introns and exons both. It undergoes splicing. We cut all these pieces, exons and introns, using endonucleases. Then join only exon exons, which are the coding parts, using ligase. It undergoes capping and tailing so that this structure becomes stable. And now this molecule can come out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and help in protein synthesis. mRNA is synthesized in nucleus, but it works in cytoplasm. We are talking of eukaryotic cells. So synthesized in nucleus using that DNA template and it works along with ribosomes and rRNA for protein synthesis. mRNAs are the short-lived RNAs. They are short-lived. That means as soon as they have translated that information in the form of protein, they would get dissociated. Now there is an interesting thing. For example, if we want the same genes to be translated to form a protein. Say here, this gives us after translation a protein. And we need 100 molecules of this protein. So are we going to use the same mRNA 100 times? It is not like that. That means for every protein molecule, the same protein molecule, the same mRNA would be synthesized 100 times. That means there would be 100 mRNAs. Each one will translate that information in the form of protein. And after it has helped in formation of that protein, it will dissociate. And that is why we say that these are short-lived RNAs. So this is our mRNA structure and its role is to take the information from DNA for translation to ribosomes. And that's why the name, the messenger RNA. Now we will talk about the other type of